Glam Fam. So, I had a video planned for today. It was going to be another vlog, but throughout the process of making it, I was just very sick and unwell and just due to all of my health problems. And I didn't want you guys to be too concerned because it was really noticeable that I was just like not well. And so I, I do get a lot of questions often and I haven't fully gone into what's going on. But I get questions all the time about what's wrong with you, why are you sick all the time, like what's going on. And I've never fully like really explained my story like this. You know, the people, the people that are close to me, they know what's wrong. They know what's going on. But I want to be fully transparent with you guys on this journey. And there's going to be days where I'm very sick. Because we all have our good days and our bad days. But for me, when my bad days hit, they hit hard. Now, disclaimer, I'm not making this video for people to feel sorry for me. I'm not making this video to get people's pity. None of that. I am making this video because I want to be honest with you guys. You guys are my glam fam. My family. You guys are the reason why I do what I do. And how can I continue doing what I love when I'm fighting a sickness and hiding that from you guys and I don't want to hide anything from you guys because you guys again are the reason why I do what I do. I'm gonna try to keep it not too long but without missing too many details but still leaving some details out. I am 23 years old. I will be 24 on September 6th this year. I have a chronic kidney disease along with medullary sponge kidneys. There's no cure for the disease and there's no cure for medullary sponge kidneys. The disease itself attacks the function of my kidneys and the kidney levels, the GFR and everything. The medullary sponge kidneys having, so having the disease along with medullary sponge kidneys, what a medullary sponge kidney is, is your kidney is basically the texture and consistency of a sponge. These aren't my personal kidneys. I don't have pictures of them. Having the medullary sponge kidneys means that my kidneys are constantly forming stones. I form phosphate stones, calcium stones, and then the third stone, I can never remember what kind it is, but it's like a rare form of stone that you don't see often. And so along with that, I'm always getting really brutal, gnarly kidney infections and then always passing kidney stones. But my body can't physically pass kidney stone. And I will explain more about that when I explain how this all started. So this all started when I was 28 weeks pregnant with my daughter. She will be three in October. Kidney stones are very common in pregnancy, which I did not know. At 28 weeks pregnant, I started forming my very first kidney stone and I didn't know what was wrong. I felt this horrible pain in my left side and I was like, oh my gosh, this is really painful. I don't know what to do. I went to the doctor. Three days later, they called me to inform me that they had found a lot of blood in my urine and they wanted me to come back in to do another check. And they had found a 14 millimeter stone in my left kidney, a 12 millimeter stone in my left kidney, and then three other stones in my right kidneys. I had stones in both of my kidneys. They told me I was quite the stone maker. Unfortunately, the stones wouldn't pass due to their size because the largest stone I've had, I believe it was 18 millimeters. So with that being said, these stones were stuck in my body while I was pregnant and there was nothing they could do because they didn't want to hurt the baby that was in me. So I went through a very rough and tough, devastating pregnancy, battling, you know, with a total of like seven or eight kidney stones, both sides, um, on both kidneys, I should say. And it got to a point where I was going into urinary retention. My bladder wasn't relieving itself because the stones were blocking my kidney function. And my ureters, which are the tubes that connect from kidneys down to your bladders, were blocked. So then, there was a point when I was about eight months pregnant, I woke up thinking I was in labor because I was in so much pain. After about an hour and a half in the hospital, the labor and delivery ward sent me down to the emergency room because I wasn't in labor and they feared it had something to do with my kidneys. The 18 millimeter stone in my left kidney had actually found its way into my ureter and got stuck and was blocking everything and it was ripping my ureters it was ripping my ureter open. So they had to put me in for an emergency stent surgery. And so they put two bilateral stents in. And what the stents are, they are rods that are in your ureters. 
they connect from your kidney, from the top of your kidney, and then they go down to the bladder and they are in your urine. And you're asleep when they put them in, but when they take them out, you're awake and it's not fun. <laughs> so I had to have stents in for the rest of my pregnancy, but then it got to the point where I needed to start taking medications for the amount of pain that I was in. So they had to medically induce me and I had my daughter early. And then a week after I gave birth, they put me in for an emergency kidney surgery. And I went under um, an Eswell lithotripsy surgery. And what that is, is basically they put you asleep and there's like this giant machine that basically laser blasts the kidneys out like they blast the kidneys into like dust particles so you're passing them through and after that was said and done you know after the surgery and having the stents while pregnant and everything and then they had to put stents back in after the surgery to help keep you know releasing the urine and stuff we thought i was done after that you know but then i kept getting after the stents were taken out after the surgery I kept forming stones and getting infections and the stones were too large to pass. And then that's when they found the kidney disease that had been kicked started from everything that happened and then my kidneys started forming into medullary sponge kidneys. So everything just kind of happened fast. I've never been able to pass a single stone on my own and my ureters are so scar tissue and damaged that to this day I still use catheters. Um, I don't have like the full Foley cath, but I have like the self catheters where I cath myself because if I can't urinate properly, I go into urinary retention, which is very painful. The kidney surgery, the well, lithotripsy, I've had four of those done total since 2016, and I've had four sets of stents in as well since 2016, and the last one I had was an emergency because the stent had crystallized to my ureter and so they had to go back in, take it out, and so I had a surgery two days in a row because it had crystallized. And that was really painful. Basically, uh, the, my ureter was rejecting the stent and it started crystallizing and forming, and so it got stuck. <laughs> that was fun. So that's pretty much what I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is the flare-up pain from my kidneys and the kidney disease. My kidneys have these spasms and it's really painful and then it shoots all the way down from my ureters to my bladder and then into my lower back. My kidney levels had then started dropping. My GFR stage, I'm, there's four stages of kidney disease and stage four is complete failure and shutdown. There's stage one, stage two, stage three A, stage three B, and then stage four. So there's four stages but it's like five steps. My stage is 3A and I will put up a picture for reference so you guys can understand what I'm talking about. But my kidney levels are under just about 50%, like they only work halfway. And once I hit about lower than that, so stage 3B and then stage 4, is obviously, you know, when they start talking about transplant lists and stuff and failure, they're basically waiting until like... It seems like they wait until you're sicker or like on your deathbed almost, if you think about it, which is really shitty. But unfortunately, they can't do anything for me right now because it's both of my kidneys. It's not just one kidney, it's two kidneys. And to answer your questions, no, I can't like obviously take kidney donations because they would either have to do a double transplant or they would have to take one kidney out and then replace another one like it's both of my kidneys so it's really kind of like one of those rare complicated situations where i'm like kind of screwed either way you think about it and unfortunately there is no cure to the kidney disease i have and there's no cure to medullary sponge kidneys like you just kind of are stuck with it in a sense so along with that i also have really severe fibromyalgia if you don't know what fibromyalgia is i'll pop up the definition Mine is just really severe and like my legs will go numb and they will collapse out from under me. And recently there's been some other health issues going on with my woman areas. So I do undergo another surgery this month. Um, it's not for my kidneys though, it's for that. They have, they're going to do an exploratory and a DNC. But unfortunately they're gonna have to go through old scar tissue because I think what at what point, it was last year 
I think I got my gallbladder taking out. I'm not sure, but there was a point in time before Christmas. Don't remember exactly when it was, but my kidneys had started attacking my gallbladder and my gallbladder started to expand and I had started, I was like on the verge of forming like the gallstones and then they had found a gallbladder disease and so they had to get my gallbladder out. So they took my gallbladder out and they said when they took it out it didn't even look like a gallbladder anymore by the time it was out of my body and it almost put me through septic shock. That was crazy. So unfortunately they do have to go in through old scar tissue on my stomach when they do the exploratory for the woman issues and I'll keep you guys updated on that. I have no idea what's going on down there. I'm not going to get into details because it, it's pretty gory and gruesome and not fun. So basically with all of that. Um, with you know the kidney issues and the fibromyalgia and then the woman part issues is chronic pain on a day-to-day -day basis and some days it's just so bad where I'm very very sick and it's hard to just function like a normal human being and so there are days where you're gonna notice like huh she seems out of it and those are the days that I just need a little bit extra patience from you guys but I didn't want to completely leave you guys in the dark about what's going on with me in case something were to suddenly happen where like something like got really bad and you guys were like oh my gosh what happened I I wasn't originally going to go into detail about what's wrong with me or anything just because I don't like to feel sorry for myself I always try to look at the light at the end of every tunnel I always try to look at the brighter side of things, you know, because I have a family and like, you know, I have my mom and my dad and my daughter and my friends and I need to stay strong for them and I need to stay strong for you guys. So, so before I start crying and getting all emotional, which I already am, I would like to end this on a happy note that I am still staying positive through everything that's going on. Like even on days where I just feel like giving up, I don't because I think about the strength that you guys help give me and the strength that my daughter gives me and again my parents and my friends and my other family members like you guys like everyone is what keeps me going and motivated and doing what I love and I found that the beauty in makeup is my therapeutic relief from the darkness that does go on inside of me you know so I find creating art is a way to express myself and a way to make myself feel really good on the outside. I always say that I always try to make myself look better than I feel. <laughs> and so with that being said, without you know putting in too many gory details, I think that that's about sums everything up. And of course, I'll be updating you guys as we go along with this journey, you know. Started when I was 20 years old, I'm now almost 24, and I'm... Uh, I'd like to say I'm still going pretty strong. So with that being said, I will see you guys in my next video. Remember to stay strong, stay beautiful, and love yourself always. Bye, Glam Pam.